Welcome friends, uh, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a first impression of Sarah Baker. These were given to me, a little sample pack, uh, when I went to Essence. Um, I very briefly uh, met Sarah um, at, the sta at her stand there at the show. Um, so we're gonna go through these and just do a very casual first impression. Um, we'll look through the notes as we talk about them and just I'll give you my general kind of thoughts, first impressions of them. And if there's any that you think uh, sound interesting or you want to know more about, then let me know in the comments and I will pick uh, those to do full reviews from in the future. This, however, is a, a straightforward, simple first impression. So we'll get into it. The first one is Lace. Uh, this is by Sarah McCartney from 4160 Tuesdays. So this one is Lace. So I'm looking at the notes down here, um, it reads Musk, Coconut, Hedione, Ambroxin, Vanilla, Cologne, Jasmine and Cedar. It's not the most natural smelling thing in the world, I mean, obviously there's uh, noticeable synthetics listed there. Um, I wouldn't say it's my taste. The coconut, you get a sense of it, it's like a subtle sweetness. In general, a musky, woody slightly sweetened hints of floral not hugely dynamic or that interesting I've got to be honest doesn't float my boat um, but it's okay I would say it's unisex uh, maybe leaning on the feminine uh, daytime casual spring and summer easy going I would say mass appealing, mass kind of likeable, but I'm just picky. I prefer kind of darker, richer scents. This one is just a bit generalized for me. It's... I think it'd be interesting if I could smell the coconut more, but I, I don't quite get it. It is, you do get a slight coconutty vibe, but it's not like a proper coconut. It's just a subtly sweet kind of note with these kind of woody musks. Uh, very, I don't know, very light, uh, just not my taste. So we'll move on to the next one, um, which is, we'll pick out Tartan. Um, so the notes for this one read, uh, Buddha wood, bread, hops, tobacco, jasmine tea, leather, Cedar Moss, Labdenum, Virginian Cedar, Hedione, and Isoe Super. I, I would say it generally smells woody. Uh, woody with a big dose of those kind of Isoe Super Hedione materials. Uh, with this kind of a slightly darker, smooth kind of woody material which I'm presuming is the Buddha wood. Um, I've never smelled that as a, I, I've never smelled Buddha wood, but um, it's just a smooth kind of woody fragrance with a musty kind of backdrop. This one's okay. If you like uh, kind of light, airy, simple, minimalistic kind of woody scents, this might be one you want to check out. I guess you could say maybe there's kind of a bread-ish kind of vibe, if anything it would be more of a brown bread. But really it's just um, kind of a smooth, musty kind of wood fragrance. I'd say it's completely unisex, suitable for work, daytime, spring and summer, casual, easygoing, likeable. Um, it's okay, I don't mind that one. Uh, it smells quite uh, minimalistic. I would say minimalistic, modern, indie, simple, kind of um, easy going, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, next up is uh, Rules of Attraction. And this one is by Miguel Matos. Um, we'll smell it blind, I think, first and then look up the notes. Um, uh, there's a weird sweetness. There's a kind of a strange floral note. There's something unpleasant in it. It's like an astringent... I can't quite describe what that is. 
there's something off about it. It's floral, it's musky, it's got a weird sweetness where I don't know where that's coming from. And there's something unpleasant in the background of it. It's kind of like synthetic flowers and musk, but like the synthetic flower died. Um, it's kind of got death behind the flower and the musk and the floral. It's, there's something sharp and slightly piercing about this one. Okay, we'll look up the notes now. Um, I, I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so looking up the notes for this one, it reads tuberose, iris, grapefruit, civet, okay, aldehyde, animal notes, vanilla, gardenia, neroli, musk, leather, cumin, jasmine, woody notes. Hmm. I don't like it. Um, I think a good way to describe it maybe is imagine a floral musky fabric softener for the washing machine for cleaning your clothing, but something off in the background of it. It's kind of like fabric softener, cleaner for your clothes, but there's just something a little bit dodgy. Uh, I would say it's leaning on the feminine. Uh, I wouldn't say it's particularly masculine. I would definitely say it leans feminine. Spring, summer, casual, daytime. Uh, don't spray too much. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not my taste, that one. Um, we'll move on to the, uh, the next one. So the next one is Charade. This is by Andreas Wilhelm. We'll smell them blind now, I think, first, and then look them up. Um, hmm. Uh, slight odd sweetness. Kind of a musty. I don't know how to describe that actually. Wait, is it? Hmm. I was gonna say it smells musky, but there's kind of a leatheriness to it actually. Oh, it's got kind of slight, yeah, slightly dirty leather. Um, this one is a slightly uh, astringent, off, dirty kind of leather. A leathery suede with a kind of a, a rough dirtiness to it. Animalic, slightly. Um, feminine or masculine, don't doesn't matter. Casual, night time, um, spring and autumn. Uh, but there's no major notes jumping out to me other than this kind of musty, leathery-ish kind of vibe. Uh, we'll look that one up uh, now and s see what it says. Okay, so looking up the notes on this one, it reads uh, tuberose, ylang ylang, styrax, benzoin, leather, patchouli, honey, sandalwood, amber, vetiver and moss. So we'll revisit it now we know what's actually in it. I mean, the f you do get a leathery vibe for sure. Um, hold on. I could be mistaken, I don't know if I should say it or not. I think I pick up a tiniest little bit of the honey and it reminds me of a... Uh, it's, it's miel something. It's a honey, floral honey synthetic, it's used in, I think, used in Hummingbird by Zoologist. I get the tiniest hint of that in here, behind the leather. Um, I Maybe a little bit of the floral, it has tuberose and Alang Ylang. Um, yeah, kind of a light, slightly dirty floral, uh, sorry, dirty leather, I guess with a tiny little bit of floral and a tiniest little bit of that kind of like, almost like a watery, slightly floral, synthetic kind of honey. It's not like a dark, rich, golden honey. It's um, uh, zoologist hummingbird is the best reference in my brain for for the way that that honey smells. Um, so, um, not my taste that one personally. We'll move on to the next one. This one is called Atlante by Sarah Sarah McCartney. Um, 
from memory, I think this is the one where Sarah uses a natural ambergris tincture that she bought. Um, some there was like a there was like a typhoon or a flood somewhere in Southeast Asia, I think, maybe Indonesia or somewhere like that. And she purchased um, some that was washed upon the beach to help a family that was struggling with rebuilding. I think from memory. This one has a fresh opening. There's a citrusy kind of fresh sweetness on the top and a light musky woodiness. The top note's quite nice. It's um, sweet, bright kind of citrus and just a light kind of woody, musky kind of scent behind it. Very minimalistic, very easygoing, very generally likeable, unisex, spring, summer, daytime, casual. Nothing really much to describe, to be honest. Um, I don't smell a whole lot of notes. It smells quite minimal. Uh, so looking this one up, it says, uh, features yuzu, seaweed, oris, lily of the valley, mineral notes, cedar, ambergris, seashells, and driftwood. Okay. So the top note is the yuzu, it's a sweet kind of soft mellow citrus. I would say mineral is a, is a good, um, there is a kind of a slight mineral tonality to it. Um, I don't think of seaweed when I smell it, but I, I would say kind of a watery mineral um, is a good description with kind of a musky kind of woodiness to it. Um, still quite simple, but kind of generally likable. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. The next one is called Greek Keys by Ashley Eden Kessler. Okay. Uh, it's slightly fresh in the top. In the top, it's very airy, fresh, bright. Um, like imagine kind of cold mountain air or something. It's got that kind of airy kind of ozone kind of uh, tone thing going on. Um, not much else to describe other than a freshness. A light, musky, fresh, airy kind of scent. So I've just looked up the notes for this one and it reads uh, pink grapefruit, lemon, mandarin orange, elm resin, rosemary, cologne, floral notes, ozonic notes, hedione, cedar, vetiver, ambroxan, oak moss and coumarin. Um, I mean, my, my opinion doesn't change, it just smells uh, bright, fresh, ozonic is probably the best word for it. Not my taste, personally. I can kind of weirdly imagine... Um, it's got something in it that reminds me of... Uh, maybe a cleaning product. It's got kind of a cleaning vibe to it. It almost could be like um, those kind of blue blocks that are put in urinals. I'm not saying it smells like urine, it doesn't, but that those blocks that are in toilets, and this sounds really bad, I'm sorry. The blocks that are in toilets, it reminds me a little bit of that cleaning kind of thing. They have this piercing sharp kind of freshness to them. But it doesn't smell like a urinal, that's not, maybe that's not the best analogy. There's something in it that's kind of clean. Um, there is a fresh air vibe, but it does remind me of slightly of a cleaning product. Um, not my taste, that one, but I would say um, unisex leaning on the feminine, daytime, casual, easy to wear. Uh, the next one is Leopard by Ashley Eden Kessler. This one smells like cotton wool off the top. It actually reminds me of a material called benzyl salicylate. It might not be, but it, it reminds me of that, uh, which has this kind of effect of smelling like cotton wool. This smells literally like a pack of fluffy white cotton wool. So imagine clouds, cotton wool. That's what it smells like to me. Uh, I can smell... Um, I can smell cashmirin uh, with it. There's a definite uh, cashmirin vibe with this kind of cotton wool note. I'm not the hugest fan of cashmirin. I always struggle to describe it. 
feathery soft kind of musky but it has sometimes a slight metallic side to it and other times a more of a like a cashmere I suppose is a good word fabric soft kind of fabric feathery kind of soft fabric with a metallic twinge that's quite artificial smelling um, I get the cashmere in with this kind of like I say a dollop of cotton wool uh, but I would say leans on the feminine um, daytime casual spring and summer uh, safe for work and generally I think likeable but lacking a bit of interest I don't get quite much depth there or particular notes jumping at me it feels very minimal kind of safe um, a little bit like a tin of uh, tin of beige paint or something it's everybody likes a beige wall but it's not particularly inspired or that interesting it's just a beige wall that's kind of what it gives to me is is looking at a tin of beige paint um, likeable but not that inspiring or interesting uh, the next one is um, the last one uh, this is oh we forgot to look up the notes <laughs> Let me go look up the notes real quick. Okay, so we looked at the notes. It says cardamom, really? Hmm. Rose, uh, violet, castorium. Is this a different perfume? Vetiver, patchouli, black pepper, labdanum, beeswax, olibanum, ambroxin, cassis, musk, sandalwood, galbanum, and cashmirin. Wow, okay. Well, I didn't, I didn't get much of the uh, the cardamom. Or oh, I definitely didn't get castorium or vetiver or patchouli. Um, what, what I get is a, a musky cotton wool uh, that reminds... Well, it doesn't matter what material it is, it smells like cotton wool. And a noticeable cashmere, which is a musky kind of material. Kind of... It smells like the colour grey, like a grey feathery metallic musk is the best way I can describe it but it smells like cashmere with a cotton wool dose um, I don't agree to that uh, note list <laughs> I don't smell a lot of that um, maybe some of those come out in the base though I'm, I'm obviously I'm just smelling top notes here it, it could change um, we'll move on to the next one so the so the last one is Jungle Jezebel this is by Miguel Matos the uh, Fragrantica writer, he has his own perfume line. Wow, I can smell that already. This smells of banana. <laughs> Immediately, I don't even have to put it to my nose. Okay. Um, it's the most interesting, it's the most out there, different, the most interest. But it smells, it reminds me of, um, do you know those, um, they're like, in America you would call them candy, but in the UK we call them sweets, but there's these sweets. They're like, um, kind of, uh, they're like, um, I don't know, do you know the milk bottles? But they're not the milk bottles, there's one that's, that's like a banana, but they're kind of, they've got the same texture as a milk bottle. I've, I don't know what they're called or what the te how to describe the texture. There's these really I don't want to say the word. <laughs> this is really not great sweets that are like banana that have this weird rubbery texture. They're like chewy rubber, um, kind of matte finish chewy rubber, but they taste of like artificial overripe banana. That's this. It smells of really overripe banana, like where the, the skin's gone brown and it's mushy inside. That strong overripe banana, but it's an artificial, fake, synthetic, overripe banana that you would get in some, like, uh, sweet thing. And kind of weirdly reminds me of um, medicine as well. Um, I can't decide if it's both or, or if I'm getting memories confused. There might be, a, like, a thick medicine as a kid that you pour out that's, like, really, really thick and you, like, eat it from a plastic spoon and it, I have kind of flashbacks of, of something like that as well. Um, I can smell a white 
white floral for sure behind the banana. Uh, it's just it's just huge kind of milky overripe off banana with white floral. It's certainly the most interesting. It's not very wearable. Um, I think you'll either love it or hate it or just not care. Um, banana's not something that I enjoy in perfume personally. I don't I don't jive with that. I wouldn't wear it myself. Uh, we'll look up the notes and we'll uh, we'll see what this one says. But it's the most interesting for sure. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, we have looked up the notes and it reads bubblegum, civet, banana, ylangy lang, tuberose, vetiver, tonka, amber, sandalwood, grape, mandarin. Sorry, orange. My correction. Peach, vanilla, and uh, rose. So. Bubblegum is actually a very good description of it. Um, I didn't think that when I smelled it, but now, yeah, for sure it smells like a children's bubblegum uh, with an overripe, and that's kind of the right texture as well. Um, yeah, a thick, childish kind of girly bubblegum with a artificial overripe banana. Definitely you get the white floral, was it tuberose? Yeah, tuberose behind it. A very weird mix, um, not natural smelling. Um, there is a slight dirtiness, I don't think the civet is, the civet is a very light hand in this, it's by no means hugely skanky, but there is a little bit of um, I guess you could say a slight raunchiness in the background. Although the civet might come out a little bit more in the mid as it starts to dry down and that banana kind of tones down a bit. Uh, very, this is like Marmite, people are gonna have like polar opinions on it. It's not something that I would wear. Um, if you like the idea of bubblegum and banana, then uh, give this one a shot for sure. It's just, it's just not my taste. Uh, the bottle was a limited edition bottle, it had a blonde wig and big black eyelashes and let me read It was inspired by cult film star and singer Divine um, I remember Sarah talking about this one um, at Essence and she was like talking as if it was like um, a lady of the night kind of, if I remember rightly kind of a hookerish kind of kind of slutty kind of vibe. <laughs> that, I might be remembering it completely wrong, but um, I, I, there's something in my head about that. Interesting, for sure. It's just not that wearable and not my taste. In general, I would, um, I would wrap that up by saying all of them are very minimalistic for the most part, very heavily based on mm, kind of aroma chemicals, synthetics, I, I, not hugely natural based. Minimal, simple composition, simple ideas, not that complicated, like I say, minimal. Um, for like real hardcore niche heads uh, like me and like a, a lot of people that are subscribed to this particular channel, because I am more niche focused, these ones might not, some of them might not kind of um, interest you that much. They, I would describe them as smelling modern minimalistic indie using, you know, cheaper materials uh, that smell kind of mass appealing and friendly and likeable to most people in the world, but not hugely specific in their taste. They're more kind of general, um, which is fine, it, you know. In some sense, it would appeal to a lot of people, and in other senses, it's not that interesting to grab anyone. Um, so it's kind of in a weird limbo for me. I find a lot of indie brands are like that, though. Um, but maybe my taste is peculiar or a little bit more niche than the average person. Um, but check them out if you if you think they sound interesting. Um, I would say. If you want me to review a specific one, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I would probably just leave it as a first impression. There's none that 
there's none that I would feel like I would want to particularly review in full personally for my own trials in them. Uh, then there's just generally not quite my taste. Um, but if you want me to, then I will definitely do a full review for you on a specific one. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I'll see you again next time with another one. Bye, everyone. Thank you.